Hello everybody, I'm Levels here and welcome to my second source tips and tricks video. These are meant to be easy wins to bump up your mod by a small margin. These aren't, you know, waxing design philosophy over an hour or so. So, today we're going to talk about lighting. Going off of what I've played over the last year, in my opinion, the average Left 4 Dead mod creator seems to neglect lighting. Lighting is very, very important. It can tell a story all by itself. It can make you feel safe. It can make you feel very intense. It can lead you to your goal. All the times I've complained in previous Left 4 Dead mods about player leading, I'm mostly referencing lighting. Because it's really basic composition of a scene. Let's take a really quick run through a level that I would bet we're all very familiar with. And you tell me with a straight face that using lighting to lead the player through a level is not important. All right, everybody, here we go. Um, I'm trying to uh, keep my voice down because my neighbor, my upstairs neighbor is home and he is an upstairs neighbor. Or she, I don't know, I've never met them. Anyways, I didn't mean to deceive you guys, but what I actually meant to say at the beginning of this video is that I'm going to be talking about light maps. Kind of different. So let's just jump into it here. What do we see here? We have, um, sorry, I forgot to turn off the director here. We have one light casting, uh, you know, hitting these three objects, and we can easily see that this one is, is casting kind of a, you know, really blotchy shadow. This one is kind of more pronounced, and this one is also more pronounced, and it also looks like the floor is more pronounced than the wall in all three cases, and that is the truth. This is how you get um, really crisp, clean shadows. I'm going to go over here and take a look at these stairs really quick. Two metric stairs, I might add. World of level design, I love you, but you are propagating false information. Stair metrics are uh, 8x12, not 8x16, if you use valve assets. Anyways, take a look at this. Remember it in your mind. It's going to come back to you and haunt you. So let me get out of here. Hopefully uh, this thing won't stop recording because it's capturing the monitor. Hopefully. All right, so here we are in Hammer. So, yes. So if we look at, um, see, yes, it was uh, broken up, split up. So what you do is you go to the uh, face edit sheet and you just click on a thing and you see up here the light map scale. I don't know exactly what light maps are, but basically it is the resolution of a shadow cast onto a material of a brush or I believe displacement. I'm not a hundred percent sure of that. The default is 16, 
and you're going to see that in a lot of valve maps, especially in outdoor areas. But anytime you see something casting a direct shadow, they're going to lower it. Um, 4 or sometimes 2 is pretty common. Uh, 16 is the default, so that's what you saw there. Really blotchy shadow. It didn't really look pronounced. It kind of looked relatively crappy. Uh, this one was the middle ground, and I had it at 8. And over here, both of these are 16, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this at 2. Or actually, let's put this at 1. Let's put that at 1. That's all you have to do. This is like the simplest thing, right? That's It's one scale that you uh, that you had to do. So let's uh, let's do that and let's recompile my map here. Normally I'd use the hotkeys, but F9 is my record button, and so there is a risk of this. In um, you know, some people might say, "Well, why don't I just turn all brush faces to light map one and stuff?" It takes a long, it takes an exponentially longer time to compile. So if you have a thousand brushes <laughs> and the default is 16, and you're kicking it up to one. It's going to take like a crap ton longer to uh, compile that map. That being said, these are baked shadows. So this is a front-ended time expenditure. Basically what that means is, as a mod creator, you're spending the time to make those shadows. And it's not impacting the end user. It's not like a performance hit or anything like that. So if it looks good... Definitely, you know, spend the time. If it's in the right area, turn it up. So these all look the same. These are all kind of crappy. But over here, ba blam! Look at this. Really nice. Uh, this uh, this brush face right here. It was still the default 16. So this is definitely a risk you run. If you're gonna have a shadow, don't have it cross two brush faces with different light map values. Otherwise, you're gonna get something crappy like this. And um. You know, there are things that will affect the uh, Christmas of the Christmas, <laughs> the crispness of the shadow. Um, this lighter shade right there. So my son is up there casting a light and this is the bounce lighting. So bounce lighting will affect the fuzziness, I guess, the resolution of the shadow. And also, oh, damn it. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Um, also uh the fog fog in an environment will also um it acts to scatter i'm just gonna cut out all the volume for the survivor's shooting fog um scatters light um both in the real world and in source to some degree i guess so fog will also uh muddy that up so you know use these as like exclamation points in in a in a space in your environment if you're going down a you know if you're going down a uh, hallway and, and you see something like that and it's like all really cool looking and it's, you know, it's, it's better than just a giant splotchy shadow cast on the, uh, on the wall there. This, uh, this type of shadow makes sense for lights that are very close to the object, um, obviously, or, or a very high intensity, like a searchlight or something. Fluorescent light bulbs like hanging from the ceiling, you know, cast like fluorescent light bulb up there, hitting that thing, not going to cast a super defined shadow because um, of the amount of light bouncing or off of uh, the reflective surfaces. But the sun, very intense, so it's going to cast hard shadows. Uh, any like, like if there, if there was a lamp right here, hitting up here, this would be a, a very, very crisp shadow and stuff, so. That's going to be it for light maps. Super easy, right? Super easy. I see way too many mods with like, you, you, you go through and you look at all the lights and you can tell that everything is default 16. So anything that has, you know, like a really hard light casting shadows and stuff, bump it up to at least a four, spend the time to render it out, take a look at it. And, um, it's going to be, it's going to look a lot better. So I hope this helped. I hope this was uh, educational to someone out there. Uh, let me know in the comments if this is. Let me know what you want to see next. I have an idea of what I want to do uh, for my next video, but you know, if there's something that's sort of racking your brain trying to figure out, um, let me know. I'll try to help if I can. Um, I'm not an expert. There's other places out there that have way more um, information repositories than I do. 
But uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found it helpful. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Keep making stuff.